Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. It is one, my friends. I'm going to be testing the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti in 2022. Last time that I tested it, it was in 2020. 20, yes, 2020. <laughs> and of course, a lot of new games have come out since then. And uh, well, it's time to retest the 1050 Ti and some other GPUs that I have in the collection. And it's also time because I, I couldn't make this work. This was supposedly today's Sunday video, but well, yes, it's broken. I might still make a short video with it because it sounds beautiful, guys. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> let's, let's move on. 1050 Ti day. So this is the Asus Trix model of the card. It comes already overclocked out of the box it's beautiful and everything i've already shown you that in the uh, previous 1050 ti video which only got like what a million views or something yeah that's crazy how the heck <laughs> thank you very much by the way also the 1050 ti is a 75 watt gpu so it only requires a six pin in this particular model but in some other models it doesn't require a power connector from the power supply whatsoever it has 768 CUDA cores four gigabytes of gddr5 memory it released back in 2016 so it's uh, six years old. What the hell? How is it six years old already? And it's released for 139 US dollars, which is what it costs six years later. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough intro. Let's install this in the system and see what it's capable of in 2022, shall we? And the GPU is now installed. It's desktop time. GeForce GTX 1050 Ti showing up there in MSI Afterburner along with the latest NVIDIA drivers, of course, 512.15 at the time of recording this video. Uh, should we overclock it a little bit, guys? I mean, it's an old card already. We're just going to push it a little bit here. 50 megahertz on the core and 100 on the memory clock. You can check out all of the GPUs specs right here in Tech Power Up GPU Z. Again, it's a 4 GB GDDR5 card. And over on the left, we're pairing it today with a Ryzen 9 5900X and 32 GB of RAM. Let's get right into the first game. First up, we got Elden Ring, which released this year. 1080p resolution using the medium settings preset, but I already changed a couple of things. I set the AA to high because it doesn't take any FPS and the motion blur to off. So these are the settings that I would utilize in this game with the 1050 Ti. The 1080p resolution still gives you a crispy image if your monitor is a 1080p monitor of course and uh, this is one of the most intensive areas at least at the start of the game and as you can see it's still pretty damn good it runs really well here at 30 plus um, unfortunately it stutters a little bit but that's just the game's fault they didn't really optimize it all that well I'm still waiting on that patch by the way from software but well at least even in intensive scenarios like this one with tons of trees around you it doesn't drop from 30 so if you want for example to lock it to 30 frames per second and get like a ps4 like experience or ps4 pro like experience um, with medium graphics which to be fair look pretty all right you know high settings looks considerably better but medium is still okay yeah you can have it here with the 1050 ti yeah they might actually have fixed a couple of things please don't die oh my gosh why doesn't the double jump work oh i'm not dead Oh, Roach died. Okay, then. Well, that's not bad, because Roach in this game came from hell. It has horns, so it's not it's not real Roach, right? What are you doing? Are you stretching? What the heck? <laughs> yeah, this is a really solid experience. It's pretty intensive here, as you can see. I'm dead now. <laughs> it drops into the 40s. It's not really as intensive as the forest area. And uh, yeah, I could have a lot of fun in this one for sure. So it's not too bad here. Also, if you want to check out more settings and resolutions, I have a separate video on Elden Ring with the 1050 Ti, so go check that out. And now we got Dying Light 2 at the 1080p resolution. I set FSR to ultra quality. This game really likes to change the settings that I changed previously, but hey. Okay, let's go. This is the very low quality preset here. I didn't touch anything. It could go lower, by the way. We could uh, disable the the ambient occlusion here and you know what guys fsr really is a lifesaver for these older gpus i mean the game oh gosh okay uh, it still looks decent like this i can see some shimmering there for example but it, it doesn't look bad by any means and it certainly does look a lot better than like 720p for example and you can still have a pretty playable experience an enjoyable one look at this i mean 
it's amazing, right? I am really glad that FSR came to NVIDIA cards as well. It's not really the best experience that you can have in, in Dying Light 2, obviously. It's not even 60 frames per second, uh, but it is super enjoyable like this. It's not really stuttery whatsoever as well. Maybe you can see like a little frame time spike every now and again, which indicates a stutter, um, but it is all right. It is not terrible. No, 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 go up, go up, go up, go up, don't fall, you idiot. Okay, oh, oh, we made it, we made it, it's fine, it's all good. <laughs> Back when the game released, FSR Ultra Quality wasn't available, there was only quality and lower, and at those settings it does look a bit rough on the edges, guys, it's, it's a bit too blurry to me. Oh my gosh, so many of them. But I am glad that they introduced ultra quality into the game because it does look really good. You know, it's not like native res, like DLSS, for example, sometimes looks like native res, uh, but it does look pretty good. And it's super playable at around 40 FPS. So not bad whatsoever in this one. Now, Call of Duty Warzone is one of those games that got extremely unoptimized with all of the seasonal updates. Um, so we're playing this one at 1080p resolution and the low settings. All right, so two years ago in Verdunsk, not in this map, uh, we got 58 FPS average and 43 1% lows or something like that. I'm really curious to see what we can get today. Let's start counting the frames. Yeah, right away we're in the 40s, but it's not too bad, honestly. I you? What the? Whoa! What is this? Uh. Okay. Last time that I saw that truck, it didn't do anything. <laughs> is there a player inside of it or something? I don't know. I don't really play this game very often. Oh, look at that. 63 on average so far. Not too bad. Of course, we're going to play the entire thing through. Yeah, water is pretty demanding for some reason, as you can see. Dropping into the lower 40s or mid 40s. Not too bad, though. Oh, there's the guy there. No, 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 no. There were two of them there. This camping bastard, dude. I hate them. I hate these guys so much. We can do this, right? Where? What? Oh, there he is. Come on. Come on. There he is. Get over here, you bastard. Come on. Oh, finally. Oh, while dropping here, 40, 30s. Ooh, okay. That's a little bit demanding, but it's still playable, I guess. Just not really competitive, you know? All right, so I guess you can't really compare it one-to-one -to, -one to a year or two ago because it's not the same map even. Uh, but you know what? I expected it to be terrible, and it's not terrible. It's actually decent and enjoyable, guys. You can feel the slowdowns sometimes, but it's not the worst thing in the world. What just happened? What the hell? Did somebody fall from the sky and die? What the heck? Oh, there he is. <laughs> he missed. What? Forza Horizon 5 is next at 1080p using the medium settings preset. Damn, guys, I gotta say, I wasn't really expecting this. I did not remember what this 1050 Ti was capable of in this game. And surprisingly, 60 plus so far, well, not anymore. <laughs> um, but it's solid, it's okay. Of course, out in open areas like this one, it's gonna get way higher FPS, 80s, not bad. It, is it actually performing similarly to like the 780 Ti? Because the 780 Ti is way faster than this, or it's supposed to be at least. This is, however, a DirectX 12 title and the 780 Ti struggles a bit though. But I might be mistaking it. Oh my God, I actually thought we were gonna stop there. <laughs> and city time. This is where it's gonna become more intensive. 60s, wow. What the actual hell? It drops less here than it did back in the other place, the Horizon Festival place or whatever. I am, I am mad now because of this little thing. They, they put it there to annoy you. Tunnel time, most intensive thing that you, you're going to come across, by the way. It's now 45. Not bad, guys. Really, really solid. I would enjoy this game all day long like this, honestly. Still doesn't match like an RX 570, which uh, once upon a time cost exactly the same as this or even cheaper. 
Uh, but yeah, we got God of War now, also released this year, 1080p resolution using FSR on ultra quality there, and the original settings, which are the same from the PS4 and PS4 Pro. And yes, it's not really native 1080p resolution because we are using FSR, but this is quite smooth and it looks great still. Yeah, FSR also looks really good in this game. Uh, I would have no problems playing like this or recommending it. So yeah, go ahead and enable that option because it does make a difference here. You get smooth-ish 40 plus frames per second, basically, at least in this area, which isn't really the most intensive, but hey, it's average, basically. Uh, oh, I think I lost my son there. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Not in that direction. I want to go here, please. Andreas, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Oh, what? He just teleported to us. Okay. This is actually the first time that I'm testing God of War with the 1050 Ti. Most of the games that I tested today, I, I already tested on the 1050 Ti in separate videos, uh, but not this one. This is the first time. Interesting. Look at that. 30s here. This is super intensive, this area, but it still doesn't drop from 30 frames, even in worst case scenario. So I think it's pretty good. You can lock it to 30 if you don't mind uh, FPS variations and uh, play with the controller. It's going to be fine. It's going to run perfectly and you're going to have an enjoyable experience. Cyberbug 2077 is next. We're playing this one at the 1080p resolution using medium settings with high textures. And I changed the FSR here to ultra quality. Again, the savior of this GPU in some games. Here we are getting 30-ish FPS on medium settings, guys. All because of FSR. If it wasn't for FSR, we'd be in the lower 20s for sure. Like this, this is a playable experience and it looks great. Again, you can see some shimmering sometimes and some noise as well because of FSR, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. I'd much rather play like this than on low settings without any FSR because medium looks considerably better in this game. So let's go to a more intensive area right now. Maybe it will actually drop from uh, 30 frames per second. Oh yes, it's in this direction. Okay, so this is one of the streets. Ooh! Okay, well, that's a huge drop there. Okay, I wasn't really expecting it to drop too much, honestly. <laughs> Maybe to like 28, 29, but not 25. Holy crap. All right, is this game intensive? Huh. Yeah, maybe we actually did get 30 plus on low and not on medium last time that I tested it, guys. Interesting, it has a Steam Deck uh, profile right now. Mostly high settings, that's impressive. Uh, let's go with the low settings now. All right, still ultra quality FSR. And yeah, okay, this is it. So this is what it takes to get 30 plus all of the time. Uh, forget about the medium settings looking way better. Well, they do look way better, but... Yeah, you're not gonna get 30 plus, unfortunately. But when the game came out, you couldn't really get 30 plus all of the time on low at 1080p resolution, and now you can. So that's amazing. All because of FSR, of course, once again. You can even, like, increase a couple of settings here and there, maybe, like, reflections and lighting to make it look prettier, and you'll only lose, like, a couple of frames, maybe. So that might be worth doing. But yeah, it's good to know that 29. Oh, boy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's good to know that now you can play this game at 1080p resolution, guys. Now we're playing Lost Ark. This is the first time that I'm testing this game, by the way. 1080p resolution, very high settings. The only thing I disabled was motion blur. All right, so it seems like the game is stuttering a so, little bit, by the way, in this area. In the prologue, it was absolutely fine, by the way. Maybe it's because... There are other players running around now, but in a game like this, it doesn't really matter too much, honestly. I'm gonna start counting the frames as well. Um, we need to go here for the quest, and uh, there goes our own set lows. <laughs> Can we actually get out of this area, though? Because I, I would like to see, like, a vegetation area. I was in a vegetation area earlier, like a, a little bit of a forest. Okay, so now we are below 100 frames per second into the 90s and 80s at times. Yeah, it seems like vegetation is the most intensive thing that you're going to come across in this game. At least from what I've seen so far. Maybe boss fights and stuff like that will drop it even further, of course. Uh, but I, I don't really know where to go or <laughs> to benchmark this. Ooh, now that I think of it, maybe there will be 
some jacks in this game. I know that there's a roach because I have one. Oh, it just dropped a little bit of a thing here. Oh, hello there, kind sir. Let me get that kill for you. Thank you. So this game actually recommends a GTX 1050 uh, as the recommended requirement. And oh my gosh, so many of these. No, we need to go. We need to go. All right, thank you. Let's go. Keep on going here. Okay. So I was a little bit skeptical when I got into it. I was going for like high settings, but then I saw like 120, 130 FPS. And yes, uh, very high settings, I think, is more adequate for a 1050 Ti. Runs absolutely fine, aside from those stutters. But again, in a game like this, I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, wait a second. Come on. Oh. I killed him with one hit, almost. Seems to be pretty interesting, this game. A lot of people have been playing it, of course. It's super popular at the moment. Uh, and yeah, I might actually get into it a little bit. I don't know. It's Broken Field 2042 now, guys, and I have no idea what's wrong with that cursor. What the actual hell? <laughs> They can't even get the cursor right, god damn it. Okay, so 1080p resolution using the lowest settings. And I know this game is basically dead at this point, but I, I'm still curious to see if they improved something. So far, not too bad. Yeah, it has a few stutters still. Oh boy, <laughs> terrible ones in fact. I, I really expected them to, to fix those, but hey, they can't even fix the damn game. So, so well, this is where the 1050 Ti starts struggling a bit and showing its its age, you know. Uh, but it's not too bad, honestly. It's still playable. If it wasn't for the stutters, it would have been a really, really good experience. What the? Oh, I thought. Okay. Oh, I guess the one percent lows aren't really that horrible, honestly. And the game still feels responsive with 30 or 40 frames per second. So. Uh, it's actually impressive that a little GPU like this one can still kind of play this game, even though nobody is playing it, and I don't really recommend it because, well, again, it's broken field. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. I haven't really seen the scoreboard update yet. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Yes, simple things like a scoreboard needed to be added like five or six months after the game released. That's completely ridiculous. Oh, what the actual hell? Okay, all right. I was going to try to shoot like a jet or something or a chopper, but no need. They are killing themselves. That's great. The tank there. Oh my god, huge explosions and stuff. I wish they had just classes in this one, like the normal battlefield games, you know. And we're recording, it's Fortnite, guys. We're playing this game at 1080p, low settings, DirectX 11, and this is another one of those that uh, released quite a while ago in 2017, but it has been getting tons and tons of seasonal updates and uh, performance is totally different. I mean, even the engine is totally different. This is Unreal 5. Uh, engine already. And I remember like a year ago, this would get like 150 FPS on low settings, even more than that sometimes. And now it drops. Sometimes it even drops from 100, which is still pretty damn good. Don't get me wrong, you know, it's still very, very playable. But yeah, performance is very, very different. Actually, I'm going to start counting our FPS after I pick up all of the mushrooms. Otherwise, the averages are going to go up by a lot there. <laughs> and there we go. So Crisp the farmer is done with the mushrooms. As you can see, it is dropping a little bit here inside of bushes and stuff. A couple of stutters. That's normal in Fortnite. After a couple of games, they will go away, by the way. So that's not really a big deal. And it's actually quite smooth. I was expecting it to be stutter night. And by the way, if you also have a 1050 Ti and you're not seeing these FPS, it might be because of your CPU. I actually tested an i7-3770K. It was good for like 120 to 140 FPS on average. So it wouldn't really bottleneck a 1050 Ti. Surprisingly, this is actually a high refresh rate experience, guys. I was not expecting these insanely high FPS, honestly. <gasps> oh, oh boy. No, 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 no. Wait, we can do this. We can do this. Yes, they can't build, so we have the upper hand, right? Come on. Nice. All right, there we go. I have no idea what's happening right now. I'm hearing so much stuff happening around us. Oh, there's a guy there, though. Nice shot. Hear me, somebody else. There he is. Oh, we're gonna die now. All right, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go if you don't mind, okay? Thank you. 
<laughs> and now Grand Theft Auto San Andreas the Definitive Edition. We're playing at 1080p using the medium settings preset. And I set these over here too low because they're intensive and they don't really provide you with many uh, goodness in terms of like visuals to performance ratio basically so let's start counting our fps here and as you can see it is enough for us to get around 60 frames per second yeah, it's actually pretty enjoyable this one 69 on average look at that amazing <laughs> perfect averages right there unfortunately it does stutter a lot this game so i don't like that i wish they could fix it but they probably won't because it's based on the unreal engine so it th those games tend to stutter basically <laughs> you know what? I don't care about anything else. We're just gonna... Oh, my! Oh, I don't know how to... Oh! <laughs> well, we got worst case scenario, I guess, with all of those explosions. Yeah. I don't like cars, so uh, there, there we go. I exploded all of them. I love the cheats in this game, guys. <laughs> oh, this guy's just chilling here. Oh, all the cars exploded in, in, in front of me, so it's fine. Yeah, just gonna chill, go to the sidewalk, not even go to the sidewalk. Who cares about sidewalks, right? Yeah, look at that. Mid-40s right now. Mm, no, we're gonna die. No, we're not. Oh, 40 bucks. Nice. And finally, for the last game, we got last year's Far Cry 6 at 1080p using the low settings, no HD textures, of course, and the FSR set to ultra quality. Now, let me tell you guys, this is actually quite surprising, isn't it? 60 something FPS in a 2021 title with a 1050 Ti, guys. No stuttering issues whatsoever, by the way. And FSR, well, it could look better in this game I can tell that some things are a little bit fuzzy and uh, yeah, they don't look quite good at the distance especially like, yeah you can see a lot of alias there right but hey it's a 1050 Ti and like 50 to 60 FPS on average in Far Cry is actually pretty decent for a card like this let's see are there any like enemies around here start exploding things please notice me senpai okay thank you thank you there are enemies there's one there well, if I kill the enemies, there will be no enemies, and we can't really fight them all at once. I'd like that. You know what? You know what? I have my ultimate here, so let's try that out. Super explosions and effects and stuff, and it's not really intensive, as you can see. It didn't really explode near us, though, but hey, hey, what the heck are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that these are low settings if I didn't know, guys. Because it, it does look pretty damn good, doesn't it? Even, like, the reflections uh, on the weapon and stuff. When I reload, for example, look at that. Wow. <laughs> uh, hi. And the FPS don't seem to vary that much, even in, like, uh, forest areas like this one, with tons of vegetation around us. It only drops into the lower 50s. This is quite nice. Can I, can I, can I just go there, please? No, it doesn't work this way. <laughs> oh, what the hell? That looked like Wapo. <laughs> well, we gotta go this way. Oh, boy. Am I gonna fall? Oh! I instantly died! Oh my god! Alright, even in Far Cry 6 I died. It's conclusion time, let's ask the question. Is the GTX 1050 Ti still meh, like we left it in 2020? Or is it bad these days? I actually think that it's still meh. It's kind of impressive, actually. It surprised me in a couple of games today, like, for example, Battlefield 2042. I was expecting it to be unplayable, and I still had fun. Yes, believe it or not, you can still have fun in 2042, especially if you play it, like, once per month, so you don't uh, grow tired of it. <laughs> and, like, God of War and Dying Light 2, for example, those two games with FSR... Uh, they, they were actually really playable and they looked great still. But should you buy the 1050 Ti in 2022? That's a different question, guys. I mean, if you can buy it for like a hundred bucks or lower, I'd go for it these days. I know in 2020 I said you shouldn't buy it even like for 80 or 70 bucks. Uh, I actually bought this one for 60 euros in 2019 or 2018. But well, unfortunately, the market changed a lot and... Uh, I think a hundred bucks for one of these with four gigs of VRAM, 
it's pretty all right, okay? You can play a ton of titles. Uh, games that I haven't even tested today that are in the previous video, like CSGO, Valorant, those will run perfectly as well. Still, that said, in like a couple of months' time, maybe prices will drop further, and uh, if you find like an RX 570 for 20 bucks more than this, or even 30 bucks more than this, you should go with that option instead, because it's way faster. It's the same thing all over again. Like, when this card came out, it cost the same as the RX 570, or slightly cheaper than that, and it, the 570 outperformed it by a lot, and it's still the same thing today. If you can find the 570 for just a little bit more, you should definitely get that card. Also, let me know what other newer games you'd like to see in these uh, retests or re-reviews, and I will bring them, of course, and uh, yeah, I'll probably start making these alongside with normal Sunday videos, testing new GPUs that I get or new CPUs, those are coming soon. And uh, yeah, during the week, I'll probably take a look at other older GPUs that I haven't reviewed in a while. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.